just give another minute or so. All right, it looks like I think folks are in. Um, so we can begin. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to pass it over to my colleagues and we'll start right in. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us for the Boston Air question and answer session. This event is hosted by the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture within the city of Boston which is on the traditional homeland of the Massachusetts people. We acknowledge the continuing presence of the Massachusetts as well as the Wampanoag and Nipmuc peoples. Um, we also recognize the indigenous peoples represented in the city's residents um, in addition to those in the diaspora. I wanna thank all of you here today for your time and for being in community in Boston. Just a reminder that this meeting is being recorded and that there are closed captions available by pressing the CC button on the bottom toolbar. Uh, my name is Karen Goodfellow. Um, I use the She Series and I am the Director of Public Art for the City of Boston and also direct the Boston Artist Residency Program, Boston Air. I'm joined by my colleagues, Sharon Amaguni and Christina McGeehan. Christina, Hello. do you wanna, I'm um, oh, sorry. I thought you were gonna be like. Christina, Christina do you wanna you introduce like yourself? Sure. Sorry. Hi, everybody. My name is Christina McGeehan, and I'm the communications director for the Arts and Culture Office. So um, for the AIR program, I do a lot of um, helping with outreach and getting the stories out about all the different projects the artists work on throughout their residency. I'll pass it on to Sharon. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon McGooney. I use the She Series, and I am the program manager for Boston AIR. So I support with daily operations and ins and outs, strategic thinking, and supporting the artists while they're in the residency program. And also feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat. I saw some folks already began doing that, but feel free to say hello and um, you know share information you'd like. And I'd so, just like to take a moment before we start. Um, I see in the chat that someone is saying that um, we're having issues with screen sharing and chunks of our screen are blocked off. Um, can anyone let us know if they're still seeing that or if that's resolved itself? Okay. Is it okay. It looks like I think you're um, all set, Sharon. I think it was just you moving the toolbar or something over at one point. So it looks good now. Okay. I think it's when I try to open the chat. So um, I think my colleagues will be able to man that so I don't open it and disrupt the visuals on the screen. Okay. Um, so here is the agenda for today. We'll be looking at the program overview and then we'll go to the call to artists. And after that, we'll take a brief look at previous years and former heirs and then go into some common questions and the Q&A session. So let's begin. Um, during today's webinar, you'll also see images from the call to artist PDF. Um, one of our colleagues will send the link to that in the chat so you can follow along as well. And we wanted to start off by sharing this quote from Mayor Wu, elevating and investing in Boston's artists by bringing them into City Hall and embedding them in our department's work is crucial to addressing the challenges we're facing as a city in new and creative ways. In this moment, Arts and culture will help us recover, heal, connect, and thrive. So it's a wonderful quote to start off. And I'll just pause again for a moment to see our folks still having um, issues viewing the screen. Or if it's, it's, is there anything it blocking like the it's image? It's a couple people, but not most people. So I'm not sure um, what the issue is. We are recording this, um, as I said, and we'll be posting it. So if you cannot see it and you want to come back and look, or if you want to try signing out and coming back in, um, please feel free to do that. But we will be recording this and hopefully it looks right. If, if our recording comes out funny, we'll also post the slides so that you'll be able to see them. Thank you, Karen. And thank you all for your patience, flexibility, um, you know, a little while into Zoom world, but there's still obstacles. Okay. Um, so Boston Air is a civic partnership between socially engaged artists and city department. It's a city program in which a group of six artists from poets to painters to drummers spend 15 months collaborating with a parallel group of city of Boston partners. 
Together, the artists and city partners from Boston Air form the Boston Air cohort. They co-design projects, acting as thought partners to imagine and test new approaches to the challenges the city of Boston faces. And the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, specifically my colleague Karen Goodfellow and myself, help lead monthly partner circles, which are facilitated conversations with the artists and city partners. And these gatherings provide a space to engage honestly with one another, break out of silos, and support the development of the residency projects that address the holistic needs of the communities. And we believe that everyone has expertise and that we can work together to create a more equitable Boston just giving you the general idea of the program overview. So, you know, what does all of this wonderful language actually look like in action? Um, we wanna share a video, a uh, short video, it's Boston Air 101 from our last cohort, and it gives you a sense of the program, but also giving you a look at last year's cohort and the projects that came out of that. So I'm going to press play now, please let us know if you aren't able to hear if there's any audio issues. Let's pause for a second, it's audio Boston in. Artists and Residents. Thumbs up, I'm assuming. Okay. Great. Artists and civic workers explore, critique, and reimagine a better Boston. In this year long collaboration, a cohort of artists bring their artistic expertise to the city, study programs and policies, and develop projects that test new approaches to city policies and processes. Under the guidance of the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, artists are strategically placed with city partners that share a deep investment in social justice and with whom they co-design their projects. In addition to individual artist residencies, this cohort of artists and municipal civic workers meets monthly to explore the intersectionality of their work and support one another. Since the program's inception in 2015, the common themes explored have included resilience and racial equity, understanding how local government impacts Bostonians, and democratic creation of city policies, processes, and procedures. Every year, projects are responsive to that year's social and political context. The 2019 to 2020 cohort. Five artists and five city departments have teamed up to co-design and create projects. In the wake of COVID-19, the program and the artists and city partners pivoted, making all engagements virtual and developing residencies that also respond to the current public health pandemic, while applying a lens of resilience and racial equity. This year, virtual programming has been embraced to produce dialogue around social justice topics like better understanding the cultural roots and impact of public monuments and colonial myths and a poetry series that provides safe space for trans and non-binary artists to share their creative work. The pandemic has further revealed the disparities in fair housing as concerns about losing housing grow during this time. Projects that were already exploring fair housing access disparities and the nationwide budgeting process have pivoted to provide resources in an accessible and safe way to address those concerns. With the uncertainty, disproportionate impact, and interconnectedness presented by the current public health crisis, community and civic advocacy are needed to bring forward the needs of the city's most underserved. To help imagine municipal policies and practices that help Boston become more resilient, the Artist in Residence program brings together municipal civic workers and local artists to collaboratively explore alternative solutions to city problems through creative problem solving. We at the Housing Innovation Lab are currently exploring the ways in which the Triple Decker has tied the fabric of the city together as a housing typology that's allowed many to call Boston home. In this exploration, we've understood that art and storytelling is a key component to engaging with residents, external partners, as well as other city departments. To partner with Boston Artists in Residency Program is to work alongside dedicated artists that are willing to engage with the work we explore and provide a unique perspective on how we shape our work and communicate it to a wide variety of audiences. To date, Boston Air has supported the projects of 25 artists and their city partner collaborators. With artists and city partners doing the work to challenge and reinvent the city systems and policies together, we can reimagine a better Boston. I was muted. Um, and I think, all right, visuals I think are clear. 
Um, I just want to mention that I especially love that clip because it is narrated by both our artist partners and our city partners, and it's great to have both the groups of folks talking about the projects and the resident program. Boston Artists and Residents. Uh, so now we're going to go through the call to artists together. And the call to artists is just a description um, of uh, the job and what's expected in this role. Um, and I'll pause again, just make sure that folks are still visually clear and seeing things they need to see. Okay, great. Um, so again, now we're going to go through the call to artists. Um, my colleagues are going to throw in the chat, I think they did earlier as well, just the link to the PDF so that you can look along as we go through the document. Um, okay. And I'll pause, see if, just to make sure that, uh, are folks able to see the main part of the, the video or are things still being blocked? Cause I can adjust to make sure folks are able to see what they need to see. It looks fine on my end, sure. Okay, great. Thank you all for your patience. So looking at the call to artists, we'll start with first the basics. And here you can see the kind of general important information. So the budget artists receive $37,000 in artist stipends and up to 10,000 for project materials. What else is important here is also the application timeline open on January 10th and closes on February 18th. So 5 p.m., please bookmark that date. Uh, we're having the virtual question answer webinar today on the 26th and welcome written questions until Thursday, February 3rd. So just some of the basic, basic information there. And here you can also see the eligibility and this calls artists open to all artists, organizers, cultural workers, age 18 and over with demonstrated experience working on civic issues, whether through community organizing, cultural work or social artistic practice. And individuals working in any and all media are encouraged to apply. And full-time city of Boston employees are not eligible to apply. And just to note, don't be discouraged by any of the categories or the titles that we shared above, like artist or cultural worker. If you don't necessarily use that language to describe your own practice, but think that your practice and experience applies to this residency, we encourage you all to apply. And then here on the right, you can see information about the selection criteria. And we want to note that a committee of local arts leaders and Boston Air mentors are going to be conducting the first review of artist submissions once the deadline closes. And then after that, we'll have city officials who will be reviewing applications and thinking about compatibility with the partnering departments. And then after that, we'll have interviews with top applicants and then they'll be invited to interview. And after that, we'll choose the final cohort. All right, now moving through the call to artists, next we have city partner information. So this year, we're really excited to be working with some wonderful departments. There'll be six year airs this year. And we have partnering departments are the Parks and Recreation Department, the Environment Department, Boston Transportation, the Planning Division of the BPDA, the Research Division of the BPDA, and then also the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. And our department will be specifically working with the Participatory Action Research Air. And so we encourage folks to learn more about each, of, about each of the departments. We'll share the links in the chat, but we definitely encourage you to take some time over the weekend or this week and really kind of dig into these departments, think about their content and the work and which department you want to apply to be partnered with. And there will also be intro videos that we'll post at the end of this week to each city partner. Um, and this just helps show some general information about their programs, initiatives, and kind of helps you to get to know the city partner that will be working with the artists across the year. So also on the right here, we have some information about the application and questions. As Karen mentioned, at the end of the presentation, we'll be taking questions and you can send them in the chat. If you have additional questions after this webinar, you can email them to bostonair at boston.gov and all questions must be sent in via email by February 3rd at 5 p.m. Please make sure you title the questions Boston Air so we know what you're talking about and please make sure you get them in before that 5 p.m. deadline. After that deadline, the responses to questions asked here and via email will be posted on boston.gov slash Boston Air on February 4th by 5 p.m. Again, so if you're watching this webinar after February 5th, you can no longer email, send questions, but please check the uh, Q&A document and see if your questions have already been answered in that document. Thanks, Sharon. Can, can I just add, um, so we're doing a webinar here and we actually have a Q&A function here. So if you have questions. I know people are chatting in the chat. If we could put your questions about the program for the end in the Q&A, that might be a little helpful for, to make sure that we don't miss anything. 
Great point. Thank you, Karen. Yes, that's um, probably the best option because I see the chat is already being, um, you know, filled with a lot of comments. So please direct your question to the Q&A function on the bottom of the Zoom screen. So now we also want to share about the application. Um, the application uh, should be sent in through submittable. So please don't send us any applications via email. We're only accepting them electronically through our submittable platform. And so here's an image submittable. Um, if folks aren't familiar with it, definitely recommend after this webinar going and making an account and just practicing online. Um, you might be familiar with it from other calls in our department. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, but we do recommend just like going on it and playing around and practicing putting in your application there. But we also please recommend that you make sure you get in before the deadline. Personally, I recommend setting a personal deadline a few days before the 18th, maybe on the 15th or 16th to get it in so that if you do happen to have any technical difficulties, any issues with submittable, you have enough time to reach out to us and we can support you because once the deadline closes at 5 p.m., we can no longer accept any more applications. All right, um, so now we're gonna go and talk a little bit about the structure and timeline. And I'm gonna pass it to my colleague, Karen. Thanks, Sharon. Um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the program structure and timeline. Uh, so what do we mean when we say the artists in residence program? We spent a lot of time working, uh, we spent a lot of time working through the title on the front page of the call um, to try to indicate what it is we mean when we talk about the program. And we came, came up with Boston Air is a civic partnership between socially engaged artists and city departments. In particular, we wanted to emphasize the coming together of artists and city workers, all of whom are passionately interested in civic life and collaboration. In this way, the City of Boston's Artists in Residence program is different from other artist residency programs. It's also different for every participant in each cohort. One former heir said to us they thought of it more like a doctor's residency program than a program where you're working independently and apart from the world to create art, like many other artist residencies. In this residency, we are very much in the world together. Through AIR, you are in residence with Boston and the communities we serve uh, through the city departments and the tools that they have. Uh, this program is, um, as I said, a civic partnership between socially engaged artists and city departments. The residency projects have taken on a lot of forms over the years, um, but focused on serving residents, creative problem solving, connecting communities to city departments and to each other, uh, and the policies and programs that the city has and breaking silos between artists and government. We encourage folks to watch some of the videos from the past cohorts to get a sense of the diversity and breadth of work, but please don't feel limited by what you see. I, every residency partnership is unique and we don't expect one to look like another. Another part of what makes the program unique is the design. This year, there are specific periods that the artists will be going through. Uh, we're currently in the application review and matchmaking phase. Um, thank you for being here with us. Uh, for us in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, the Boston Air Program has a two-year cycle. Um, for artists and city partners in the residency cohort, this is a 15 month long residency experience. You, here you can see a blue circular diagram representing the overall program cycle. Um, and we also have a pink arrow representing that each cohort has a linear timeline that's part of that cycle. Once artists are chosen, we'll move into the research and incubation process in April. Artist partners will be uh, learning about the department they're matched with and the, their programs and initiatives, city partners will be learning about the artist practice and their expertise. And then together the partners will begin to co-design a project. Next, we'll enter into the engagement period where the project begins to take form and iterate. Uh, folks will be presenting to the public in some capacity during this time as well. So we'll, we'll sort of be moving outward by that time. Last is a launching period where the projects wrap up and begin preparing to exit the residency program. And really, uh, this is where we spend time thinking about if and how the work can sustain itself or be embedded in the city department's practices. This is something we um, are intentional about throughout the program, but that's the time where we're really trying to apply that, apply that to um, be our focus. And after that, uh, we uh, the residency cohort you know, concludes and we take some time to help projects transition, reflect on our learnings 
and prepare for the next residency cohort. In AIR, participants of um, the residency program are asked to co-design projects that consider the immediate and long-term needs of Boston's diverse communities, examine city policies with a lens of resilience and racial equity, help residents understand how local government policy impacts Bostonians, support a collaborative and democratic creation of city policy process and practice, and uh, lastly, provide a model for civic practice or community engagement that departments can utilize beyond the tenure of the residency or that impacts departmental programs, practices, and or operations. In, in addition um, to those goals that we have for the program, um, we have outcomes in mind as we're, as we're running this program. We have outcomes for artists, outcomes for city government, and outcomes for Boston in general as a community. So for artists, we're really looking to increase the ability of Boston artists to design and lead socially engaged and impactful projects by providing a diverse cohort of thought partners, workshops with subject matter experts and knowledge of municipal work. Uh, for city government, we're looking to increase capacity for city departments and employees to take risks, to be creative and think holistically about the design and success of city policies and initiatives. And for Boston, um, we're hoping to expand the integration of creativity and participation into municipal work, deepening our collective understanding of what it means to be resilient and equitable in creating new approaches, policies, or procedures by which Boston can become a better city for every resident. And here you can see uh, the timeline on the left. Um, and again, some important dates to keep in mind are February 3rd, the deadline to send questions in, and February 18th, 5 p.m., the deadline to apply. But I will also you know, support what Sharon was saying before. Please try um, to submit a couple of days early. Every time we have a deadline, someone um, encounters some problem and we get um, you know, emails saying, I tried to submit like right on the dot and it didn't go through, I'm not seeing it. Um, so I totally understand. I think we've all been in that place, we've all done that, um, but, but um, I'd encourage you to try to get it in early. And um, a little bit about the program elements. Um, we have cohort meetings that we've referred to um, a little bit here. We have partner circles and partner circles are conversations with the artists and city partners uh, facilitated by ourselves. Uh, the air leadership team these gatherings provide a space to engage honestly with one another to break out of our silos and support the development of residency projects that address the holistic needs of communities um, this really is a time that we all come together um, and you know we call it a circle because we really we take turns and go around and talk about the work that we're each doing and give each other a little bit of time to bring up any questions or wonderings that we might have and to invite feedback from others we also have artist sessions, and in these, the artists meet with the AIR leadership team, and these meetings include reading discussions, group listening and advice, updates and developments, and opportunities to get insight on challenges or questions. Um, we'll also have um, opportunities to support the city partners in the same way. And uh, lastly, we have workshops, which um, we'd invite everyone in to come together and for us to do some learning together. So the program elements, uh, the requirements for the program, and this is where we really invite those of you attending today to think about whether this is a good fit for you um, and whether you're able to make these commitments um, because participating artists will be required to participate in cohort meetings and workshops and meet um, the following program milestones. So we ask for a, a minimum commitment of 15 hours each week to the residency, which would include attendance at a program orientation um, and two monthly meetings and other workshops, which will be planned in advance. So the two monthly meetings are the partner circles I just mentioned and the artist sessions. Um, we'll also be inviting participants to attend our staff meeting uh, once a month. So our mayor's office of arts and culture staff meeting. Um, we'll also be asking for at least two public presentations. Um, artists will share their residency work with the public through facilitated workshops, public presentations, community engagement, storytelling, and written reports. 
artists should consider how the work is impacting residents and provide opportunities for residents to engage with and interact with the residency projects. And uh, artists, of course, should consider accessibility. So these can take all sorts of different forms and we can work that out as we go, but we really do expect at least two uh, public presentations. And a lot of these folks will be doing much more. So um, probably this won't be a problem, but if you know that these are things you won't be comfortable with, this might not be the right fit for you. We'll also be asking for the submission of monthly reports, periodic progress updates and budget outlines. Um, those things are, are very doable, but it, it is important for us to, um, to keep on top of um, those sorts of notes as we go. Regular availability for internal check-ins with the air leadership team are also really helpful meetings with Christina on communications. These will be things that will be sort of scheduled um, as we go. Um, we also expect a uh, punctual submission of Boston Air project drafts and final proposal. Uh, we um, look for sharing of documentation with the communications team. That's really Christina leading us there um, to support the creation of digital content. Christina spends a lot of time helping all of these projects show up. Um, she does a lot of work and is an incredible um, collaborator with us in the program. Um, so it'll be really helpful for us to be able to get stuff to her and to work with her to do that work together. And then finally, acting in accordance with the value statement that will be collectively developed by the air leadership team, artists and city partners at the start of the residency. Um, we will just expect us to come together as a community at the beginning um, and, and talk about what our values are and what we expecting of each other. Um, so we can sort of start in a, a shared place there. We're also following city guidelines regarding vaccines and testing. Air artists must verify that they are fully vaccinated unless granted a reasonable accommodation for medical or religious reasons as per the city's vaccine verification policy. And this policy may be updated in the future, but we are going along um, with, with the expectations that the city has there. So this image uh, was shared in the 101 video and it's one of the visuals we've used to describe the air residency structure. Um, it's very simple. Um, it does not capture um, all of the elements. It's not a full representation, but it sort of gets a basic idea that we're having artists, you know, city workers, we're coming together, we're doing this program um, and that we're, you know, enhancing all of our practices. But we come in with, with um, strong, strong elements of our own that we're bringing together. Another part of what makes um, the program unique, as we mentioned, is, is the design. And this year, um, you, know, you can see here this coming in and that we're in that application review and matchmaking place in that, in that phase of our cycle. Um, and on this next image, you can see how we, how we enter into that in, in this where the small pink ball, that's all of us in this artist residency program. And we're moving across this timeline. So we're going from the um, matchmaking um, application matchmaking time phase, and then moving into the research and incubation period. And then we're spending time together. We're talking about our projects, we're researching, we're learning about each other and the work that the city does. Um, and then we're moving into engagement. And that's where you're really sharing out about your project. You start sort of doing the work uh, in a public way. Um, and then we enter the launching period. Um, and that's when we start getting ready to close up and make plans for the future. And hopefully all of that is taking us towards some of those outcomes we outlined at the beginning. Um, and I'm hoping that's helpful. Um, as we said, we've had 25 artists um, come through the program before. This is our fifth year of doing it. Every project is different. We really do recommend you look in and see what other folks have done, but we wanna make sure you understand what we're asking for. It's a big commitment um, and it's a real uh, pleasure to be able to work with artists every year doing this work. So with that, I will pass to Christina to talk a little bit more about all the amazing artists we've gotten to know through this program. Great, um, Sharon, if you could go to the next slide, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so we are entering the fifth year of Boston Air this year, and we've been doing the program since 2015. Um, and since the beginning of the program, we've worked with four different cohorts of artists. And that is 25 artists in total um, that have participated in the program and over a dozen city departments and agencies. 
And with each year of Boston Air, we've made changes to the program and the structure based off of different challenges that we experienced and, and learnings that we gathered over the course of each year. Um, so now I'm just gonna give a brief overview over the, of the past four years and what changes were made and um, what some of the artists focused on. Next slide, please. Yeah, and I'm about to go next time, Christina, but someone mentioned, we say 25, you know, diverse artists and over a dozen city agencies. We also want to note that we've had so many other members of the community who've been participants um, to make it count. So they've also been a big part of like, this air, air family, and airspace. Thanks. Okay, and so just to give a quick glimpse into year one, we started in the fall of 2015 with 25 artists, which was our biggest um, cohort that we had. And we invited them to work with 12 city departments um, to come up with ideas for how to integrate creative thinking into city government. And from that 20 group of 25, we then selected three artists to move forward and participate in full residencies. And you'll see those three artists there on the screen. Um, Lamurchi Frazier worked with the Office of Recovery Services and the Office of Women's Advancement and held quilting and poetry workshops with women in recovery. Georgia Friedman worked with the Department of Neighborhood Development and the Parks and Recreation Department to explore new uses for neglected space in the city. And then Sha Pong Lu um, worked with the Boston Police Department to lead a dialogue on gun violence and race. Next slide. And then for year two, we worked with 10 artists um, and they were in residence at BCYF centers throughout the city. Um, and they focused on the impact of civic systems and policies on communities in Boston. Some of the projects from this year focused on um, working with youth to paint the Harambe, basketball, Harambe Park basketball courts, um, teaching printmaking to fifth and sixth graders, and then holding a series of um, art workshops and cultural events for the Haitian community in Mapapan. Next slide. And then for year three, um, seven artists were selected to participate in year long residencies and they were asked to um, develop projects that apply a lens of resilience and racial equity to city policies and processes. So we had a taiko drummer who worked with older adults in Grove Hall, and they advocated for a safer crosswalk at their community center. Um, we had a poet who created an oral history listening booth that traveled throughout the city to various um, libraries and other community spaces, um, and then a whole slew of other projects as part of that cohort. Next slide. And then for last year's cohort, um, we reduced the number to five artists and five city partners, and they were tasked with incorporating several of the themes from past year's residencies to reimagine a more equitable Boston. Um, and last year's cohort was arguably um, the cohort that experienced the most changes to the residency because as soon as we started the program, um, we experienced the beginning of COVID in Boston. So we had to quickly shift the entire curriculum and program to a completely virtual setting. And a lot of the artists, um, in addition to having to um, kind of pivot very quickly and focus and carry out the projects virtually, they also um, created projects that addressed a lot of the impacts of COVID-19, um, specifically on communities that were being disproportionately affected by the pandemic. So it, it definitely had a huge impact um, throughout the course of that residency. And then last year, we also made the decision to extend the residency length from one year to 15 months, and we increased the artist stipend. So we're looking forward to continuing um, with those changes again in this year's cohort. And then just to give a quick glimpse of, um, or quick glimpse into some of the projects from last year, we had a artist that worked with students from Boston Latin Academy to create a mental health campaign at their school. Um, we had an artist who led a transgender and non-binary citywide town hall. Um, and then an artist who worked on developing a cultural emergency response framework in partnership with the Office of Emergency Management. So those are just a few examples of many, many projects and artists that participated in the program. And we're really looking forward to um, working with a new group of artists this year. Thank you, Christina and Karen. 
Um, so now we're gonna move into the Q&A session. And we're actually gonna start off first with some of the common questions that we often get regarding AIR and that started to come into the uh, Boston AIR email already. So a few common questions we received. Uh, first is, do I need to live in Boston? So for AIR, applicants that live outside of Boston are eligible to apply, um, but the projects are gonna be taking place in the city of Boston and it helps if some of the previous practice has also taken place in Boston. So if you live in Cambridge, Maryville, you know, Greater Boston, you are still eligible to apply. Uh, next is, can I apply as a team? Um, for AIR, applications should come from an individual. You can share that you are part of an artist team or collective if that's part of your practice, but only individuals will participate in the program. And we also recommend, um, you know, in your application, please clearly show which projects were done by which part of the team. So we know which part of the projects were done by you versus the you know, other members of your collective or artist team. Um, another question that we got is, you know, will we, be, will we be meeting in person? So at this point, we are planning on a hybrid approach for the program. Um, as it looks right now, we'll be starting with virtual meetings and uh, hope to have in-person meetings uh, in the future. Um, you should be able to attend these meetings in person. So for example, you know, you can't be in Texas the whole time of the residency. We do expect to be able to attend in-person meetings when they become um, available and feasible. And then another thing to note is, should I apply with a project in mind? Um, at this moment, you should not submit a proposal for a project. Um, those will be co-designed with the city partner during the research incubation phase. So um, please don't submit with a very specific project in mind as your application because that'll be put together during the collaboration process with the city partner. Okay. And I'm not sure if uh, Karen, Christine, anything else you wanna to add to these common questions before I move on? No, I'll just add that I've been trying to answer the Q&A ones as, as we go, Sharon, just trying to get them up there. Okay, great. I don't know if you see um, that. I haven't seen, but I'm actually gonna, I think, stop sharing my screen in a moment. Yeah. Um, so again, if you have any other questions um, that we don't get to in this next Q&A session, uh, after I stop sharing my screen, please email those over to bostonair at boston.gov. Please title your email bostonair. Uh, and again, these questions must be emailed by February 3rd at 5 p.m. Um, and they will be included in the Q&A that'll be posted on February 4th by 5 p.m. So now, um, and also just note, again, recommend uh, going to our Boston Air page and taking a deep dive into the videos, the blog posts, things like that, um, and really getting acquainted with the program and the previous artists. So now I will stop screen sharing. And then I think we can begin to move to the questions. Um, Karen, I'm not sure if there's some that you haven't answered in the chat yet that you wanna start with. Yeah, I mean, I think we could also go over the ones that I did answer, and then you can add to my answer if you want. Great, yeah. If you can just let me know, I'm trying to catch up and see where they are. So the first one is, does the artist okay. need to be a resident of Boston? Do you see that one? And I think you got that one already. Um, oh. So you don't need to be a resident of Boston. You do need to be near Boston. I think, Karen, I think you were cutting out. Um, yeah, I think so too. So feel free to jump in and lead us through that. All right, let me, so I'll go to, I'm um, just looking at the answered ones. Um, to resident of Boston, which address that. You don't need to uh, live in the city of Boston to apply. Um, and then I'm not sure if you, Karen, if you were mentioning that second one around uh, civic experience. Um, so the question is, you said we need civic experience. What does this mean exactly? I'm a teacher in the public school system. Is this considered having civic experience? And Karen responded, yes, absolutely. We're looking for artists who are particularly interested in working on municipal issues and community concerns. And then moving to the next answered question. Um, someone asked if the departments with which the artists will be partnered have already been determined and which departments. And Karen shared that, yes, we've already chosen those departments. It is Boston Parks and Recreation, Environment Department, Boston Transportation, the Planning Division of the BPDA, the Research Division of the BPDA, and then Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. And again, our department will be working specifically with the AIR who will be doing participatory action research. So that one, please only apply to that one if you are have experience with that and you're interested in doing that as a part of the project. Next question that was answered is what is the estimated time commitment per week? And it is a minimum of 15 hours a week. 
So now I'm just gonna move to the next portion of the unanswered questions. And Christina, Karen, let me know if, if you wanna add in or if there's anything I missed from those answered ones. So somebody asked, uh, I work full time for a city agency, just confirming I'm not eligible if it's not. Um, yeah, so if you work with the city of Boston, if you're a city of Boston employee, and I think that includes um, you know, BPS, BPL full time, unfortunately you're unable to apply. Sharon, as you answer these, I'm gonna type up answers too, just in case anybody um, does better with text. And I did okay. answer one other right before you switched over. Sorry. Okay, so I'll go back to that one. Um, and I'll just know for this one, again, this is for full-time. So if you're part-time, you are still able to apply. And the other answer question is, do applicants always have to have long-term future project in order to apply or can that be explored throughout the residency? And Karen mentioned, no. So we hope the artists will apply with very open minds and develop the projects with their partner once they're in the program. Um, that's great. Yeah, as you mentioned, um, please don't feel like you have to come in knowing exactly what you want to work on, having a very specific project in mind, because the hope and the goal of the research incubation period is that you're spending time learning with the department, learning with the programs and projects, and the department is in turn learning about you and your practice and, exp and expertise. And then together with the city partner, you will collaboratively uh, co-design a project from there. So don't feel like you have to come in saying, I know exactly what I want to do. Often uh, we found the most interesting projects come in when people just kind of be in the space together and really have open discussions and figure out what works for both of them. And all right, uh, now I'm gonna move to the open questions. Um, someone asked about the time commitment. Are the air artists supposed to be all the time in Boston working full time for the project or they can or can they take other opportunities to travel out the city? Um, so for that one, we would let you can we understand that people are living lives and if you have to like go in and out of the city for other things, but you should be um, primarily in the Boston area and able to attend you know, our meetings and things like that. And the projects that happen through air will be happening in the city of Boston. So, you know, folks in the project have been based in greater Boston, having the project happen in Boston, but we understand that like, of course, a lot of times the artists also have other commitments, other jobs, and will occasionally be, uh, you know, traveling for those things, but it's primarily in the city of Boston. I'm not sure if Karen you want to add anything to that. Um, no, yeah, it is a Boston program. Um, you know, we are the city of Boston, so we we are very focused um, on Boston in this program, and I think that's just part of the fundamental nature of it. Thanks. Um, so the next question is regarding application: Are there any sample applications available, or any tips, things folks should know when they apply? Um, so tips for applying, and I'll invite Christina and Karen also share. I think we've mentioned this a few times, but really do, although we don't want you to come in with a specific project in mind, please also do your research, learn about these departments, learn about what's happening, and think about, you know, how your practice and expertise could really support the content happening in that department. So I think my tip would be just familiarize yourself with the content um, and make sure that you feel like you have a sense of the departments. And I will also say that I think it really helps to learn about each department because you might have like a preconceived notion of what the department does and really what they actually do might be very different. So definitely recommend becoming familiar because your idea of what environment does or what transportation does might be actually different than what they actually do. And it might be something that you are really interested in and compelled to um, connect with. And I think all the departments have very compelling content this year. So I think just make sure you're really reading and learning about what's going on. Um, Karen, any other tip? Yeah, I'll just say a lot of this um, information um, is also in the call to artists and things that we'll be linking out. So um, yeah, definitely do your research, let me know at the department, but read the call to artists carefully because that might be um, might be obvious, but if it, it has a lot of um, information and, and direction as well. Yeah, um, I think somebody else asked if the recording can be shared with the participants afterwards. This recording will be posted online at boston.gov slash Boston Air. So it'll be there and publicly available for anyone to view as you continue work on your application. And so another, looking at another open question. Oh, sorry, I'm just losing my spot. Oh, Karen, you're muted, but you're talking. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, how about the, what percentage of the meeting sessions will be virtual versus in-person? I really think we, we can't say that yet. Um, we'll be following the city's um, protocol on, on how we'll be holding meetings, so. Unfortunately, we don't know. We do know that we are good at uh, pivoting uh, and that we're creative people. 
and we'll make it work. Um, so sometimes um, I, th I think as long as you can expect um, to be meeting sometimes in person and sometimes virtually, and you know both of those can be okay, um, we, we should be fine and we'll, we'll figure those things out together as we go. Oh, thank you, Karen. And I'll note that when we are, you know, in whatever way we do meet in person, we'll make sure that it is like masked and in a spacious room and things like that to uh, make sure everybody feels comfortable doing so. Right. And that will be in, in a, you know, in accordance with this 15 months from now, I don't know if that will be exactly what it looks like. Um, so please um, think about your comfort level. Great, thank you. Okay, um, so my ask is the 15 hours a week commitment flexible, i.e. not fixed schedule. Um, so 15 hours a week is the kind of minimum commitment and we're not necessarily gonna outline for folks like spend five hours here, three hours there and what that looks like. We understand folks have other projects. So it is up to the artist to figure out what that looks like for them during the week, that is the minimum commitment. And we'll have um, predetermined meetings. So we'll have these partner circles and artist sessions which will be set ahead of time and they'll be scheduled, um, but 15 hours is the minimum, but it's up to the artist to figure out what does that look like during the week for you? It doesn't have to be like nine to five the way it is for us, so. Um, is there a specific budget for the projects, workshops, and do we propose ideas before being in the cohort and speaking with the city partners about their perspectives? So I'll start with the second half of this question. Um, as you mentioned, when you come in and have conversations with city partners and you know during that research phase talk to them and think about what projects work so you can have some themes and exploratory questions in mind and then work together to figure out what the project is the budget is up to ten thousand but of course each project is different not all projects need ten thousand for the budget um not all residencies need the same amount and so usually how that works is that after you propose the project you also have a budget and you share that with us leadership team and with um, our administration, administer, administrative finance and administrative director, was what the title was. Um, so through that proposal process, we'll look at your budget and we'll see what that looks like and we'll you know, approve that. So each budget is different up to 10,000, men are always needed um, for the whole residency. But also please note that up to 1,000, so do not plan to spend more because we cannot provide more than that funding. We don't want folks to be paying out of pocket. Um, I'll just add, you know, again, just reiterate, please don't um, come into this with a proposal or get your heart set on something. Um, the whole design of this program is that you get to do the research and learn um, once you're in here. So again, share what why you're passionate about the departments, but don't commit to a project that you could have been doing if you got a more straightforward grant to do a project on your own. Um, and so somebody asked afterwards about uh, our coaching mentoring sessions for application offered. Um, at this moment, we don't offer any kind of coaching or mentoring session. We hope that kind of the things we're addressing in today's webinar and the questions we're answering can help provide information about how to apply. Um, so we don't have any specific one on time, one on one coaching mentoring time, but we, I think as mentioned, please do read the call to artists um, very thoroughly, look at the website very thoroughly. Um, look at the previous artists in the previous years um, and the work that's been posted on bostonair.gov, um, boston.gov slash bostonair. Karen, do you have anything else you wanna to add to that question? Okay, great. Um, are there any particular challenges these departments are hoping to work on? Um, so test question. Yes, I think a lot of these departments have things that they're interested in working on as well. And it is through that kind of research incubation period where you can talk to your one at your city partner one one um, we will be posting videos at the end of this week that kind of uh, have a city partner sharing some content and some spaces that they're exploring and some um, things that they'd be interested in having artists and, you know, embed themselves in. But again, just as we're asking for you not to come in with a solidified idea, we're also asking our city partners not to come in with a solidified, you know, project idea so that this process is collaborative and that the both of you are working together. So that that same kind of uh, parameter applies to our city partners as well. Of course, they have like overarching missions and goals for the department and, um, you know, the work, but they're coming in also, you know, wanting to engage and have a conversation with you all and figure out what the project is gonna look like collaboratively. Okay, um, one question is, what is the most important criteria for accepting candidates since we are not submitting a proposal? Um, definitely gonna tap in Karen for this question. I, I personally, I don't think that we can say there is like one like singular important criteria. 
I think the exciting thing with the project is that we've had so many different types of artists in the past. One thing that I think is important for me personally is, you know, reminding folks this is um, about, you know, civic practice, civic service, and uh, using the tools that the government has and use the tools that we have as a city to better serve our residents. So, you know, thinking about that, I think is very important. Again, cannot say there's one, you know, specific thing that is gonna, you know, be the only criteria that's held among others. But if you look at the selection criteria and just kind of, you know, look at those points, thinking about social justice, thinking about serving residents, uh, thinking about strong uh, vision and artistic practice, I think those are the things that can guide you, but I don't think we can say there is one thing that is going to be like the key to being chosen. I'm not sure if you want to add anything, Karen. Yeah, um, I would say, uh, you know, really read the selection criteria. That is what we will, we'll be uh, writing questions based on those criteria for our jury to use when they read your application. So we'll really, we really go through those very particularly um, so it's a little bit, it can be a little bit of a checkbox for you because that is what we're going to ask people to, how we ask people to review your applications. Um, and to, to Sharon's point, um, it's not necessarily, um, just one of those. Um, but I think, you know, your point about like showing like past interest, um, in this, in this work in social justice in, uh, work, civic work, working with municipalities, like, do you want to work with an institution? So I think that's an important question. Do you want to collaborate? Do you like partnering? Do you like being in a group session and talking about projects? Um, I think those are all good things to think about. Um, and then to look over those, the selection criteria, which are all listed in the call to artists, uh, for guidance. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. And I think adding to the things of question to ask yourselves, do you have the capacity and the commitment for the next 15 months? Um, so just, you know, keeping those questions uh, at the top of your mind while you're doing application. Um, oh, and so we also got a question about uh, living in New York City and applying in Boston. I think, as we mentioned, this is very, you know, Boston specific. We have the city of Boston. And although we don't have a residency requirement to apply, you know, we're all looking for folks with uh, who are able to, the projects have to happen in the city of Boston. And I think if you look, look at the selection criteria, one of those things is about connection to the communities here in the city of Boston. So again, no residency requirements to apply, but keep those things in mind with the selection criteria. Does the selection committee have a preference for video, audio, visual written responses to the questions? Um, for this, I will say, I don't think there's a preference, but we, I think we'll mention in the document to please just do one. So please, you don't need to put, um, when you're doing submittable, you don't have to put an audio video and a written one. So just choose one of the ways for, to respond. Um, there is no preference. There's no, like, you're not gonna lose points for choosing one or the other. Um, we have that as an option for folks that feel more comfortable giving an audio response. So choose whichever one feels most comfortable for you and that allows you to share your information as you know clearly and concisely and the best way that you think is possible. Um, while applying for the Boston Air interfere with uh, funding application opportunities with the Department of Arts and Culture? I think that's a good question. Um, I'm actually, Karen, do you, have, do you know if, I think for several of ours, it might be once you're an heir, you might not have access to apply to other things. Um, but Karen, Christina, could you hop into that one? I, Christina, you probably know better. I don't know any conflicts that would, um, I, I guess if you're applying to a full-time job with the city, it might be a conflict. I don't know that that's really yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I would have to double check our grant requirements for things like the Opportunity Fund. I know like this year, for example, we are trying to prioritize individuals who haven't received funding or opportunities like residencies and um, fellowships from our office in the past, but that doesn't automatically exclude you. So I think it depends on the specific opportunity. Some grants and some years we may try and focus funding on people who haven't um, really interacted with our office before, but I don't think that there's like a clear um, cutoff if you, um, or I, I don't think it makes you automatically ineligible for funding. And so I think just note questions we're answering here, we'll also um, capture them and put them in the q and in the um, document that we post online. Just looking through other questions. Um, let's see. How did previous applicants balance 15 hour week commitment with their full-time jobs, career and former commitments? Um, that is a great question. I think what I we can say is it is very much specific to each um, 
artists and each applicant. So I think we really ask you all to think about your commitment, think about the previous things you have to do, and is this something that you can balance within um, your workload? Of course, we mentioned 15 hours a week doesn't have to look the same every week, the way you place it. It doesn't have to be the same like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday schedule each week, but we do have the minimum requirement, but it is up to you as the artist to figure out you know, what that looks like in conjunction with your other kind of commitments and, and conflicts. I will say a lot of artists had more flexible um, schedules. Um, so realistically, it's very demanding. Some folks put in a lot more time. Um, so um, you might wanna give reflect, reflect on, on your capacity there. I think we're, are we at time, by the way? We have two more minutes. Two um, more minutes. Um, okay, program virtual or in person this year? Yes. Um, we don't know yet. We're expecting a hybrid version and we're gonna be following um, city, city direction on um, COVID for that and how we are conducting ourselves. Um, a little bit about the PAR air roll. Um, so that is an, a new, um, a new position, we've never done this. Um, we've done evaluation in the past. We found that it always felt very much outside of our process and we thought it would be great to do participatory action research this year and invite um, that person to join us as an heir to work with us in, in partnership. Um, and they will be um, given the same budget as the other artists, um, but their role will be different. Their work will be different. They'll be partnering with us and really focusing on the residency program itself and doing that research as we go. Okay, any other information you could share about the selection criteria? Um, an ideal candidate, um, and for example, artistic disciplines, we look for diversity, I'll say that. Um, we're looking for folks coming from all different places, folks who consider themselves artists, folks who do not. Um, and again, I recommend looking at the call and the selection criteria. Um, are there, go ahead. Go ahead. Are there different stages of the application process? For example, which was an applicant to move on to a stage of the application process which requires an interview or anything like that? Yes. Um, so after we have the online applications are reviewed by a committee of like of arts leaders and city partners um, and city officials. After that process, we invite a few artists, uh, applicants to an interview stage. And then from that interview stage, the final cohort is chosen. And I think we should wrap up the last question. It looks like is about what projects have made a lasting impact within an apartment and what kind of impact I would recommend watching the videos. Um, they have they have been a lot of impactful projects um, and really incredible work. All right, I think that is the last of the open questions. And um, thank you all again for attending today. As mentioned, if you didn't get to answer, ask your question in this moment, please email it over to Boston Air. Um, I think it's in the chat there. And it's also on the Cloud Artists, also on the Submittable page. Um, so send us an email by February 3rd, and we will answer your question and have it posted on February 4th. Um, thank you all again for joining us here today. We'll look forward to reading folks' applications after the deadline and look forward to working with um, you know, the six artists who will be in the cohort next year. Another one.